coming up on F1 24-7 this week. Ex-Mercedes boss reveals who could have been Hamilton's teammate in 2008. Jensen Button says that Daniel Ricciardo's move to McLaren is make or break for his career. Helmut Marko reveals that Nico Hultenberg has approached Red Bull for a seat in 2021. And Williams have been sold to a private investment firm. One partnership that F1 fans have been crying out for for some time now is for Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel to be in the same team. Now, this was rumoured that Vettel was going to be teaming up with Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes for 2021 after the German announced that he was going to be leaving Ferrari at the end of 2020. But this very nearly happened back in 2008 or for the 2008 season. So cast your mind back to 2007 and McLaren was on the rise after having such a very disappointing couple of years. You know, they came close to winning some championships. They've won a handful of races, but realistically, they never really had a reliable car. It was a quick car, but not really reliable. So they had a brand new driver lineup of Fernando Alonso at the time, a double world champion and a brand new driver in the name of Lewis Hamilton had just come through the ranks with McLaren after being there since he was 13 years old. And I think it was fair to say that it didn't really go to plan. You know, it was a brand new, you know, bringing in Vodafone as a brand new title sponsor, having two brand new drivers, one established driver, a very quick driver, and one up and coming talent. You know, Fernando Alonso and McLaren, they didn't really see eye to eye. You know, you had the Spygate scandal, which didn't help proceedings. And then you had that that incident in Hungary, which, of course, you know, that just pretty much ended all relationships between Alonso and McLaren and, you know, Lewis Hamilton as well. So Alonso announces he's going to be leaving McLaren. Therefore, they needed to find a brand new driver. Now, former Mercedes boss Norbert Haug admitted this week that they did held talks with then Toro Rosso driver Sebastian Vettel. They were saying that, the, that they were very interested in the young German and liked his potential in the sport. Now, looking back in hindsight, it was a very good move, you could say, for Sebastian Vettel. He did dodge a bullet. But how good would it have been to see Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel at a very young age, you know, two drivers that did have potential in the sport. You know, one was the almost the heir of uh, Michael Schumacher at the time, the one that was proceeded to be the next domination of Formula One, especially in Germany at least. And another one was supposed to be the future of the British motorsport face of uh, Formula One. And rightly so, we were all correct with that. Well, those that predicted it at the time, you know, look where they are now. One's a four-time world champion and one's a six-time world champion, going to be a seventh world champion very, very soon, hopefully. You know, they've done that absolutely amazing for the sport. You know, two very well-respected drivers, you know, I would say at least. And that would have been really good to see, especially with that, M with that MP4 23. It was a brilliant car that ultimately got Lewis Hamilton his uh, first World Drivers' Championship at the time. Very, very close, though, but he got it. So imagine seeing Sebastian Vettel in the other car. Very, that would have been pretty interesting. You know, he took over line, and he, he was an okay driver, but he did. He, I would say he underperformed at McLaren. I wasn't really following that season, but for, from what I've heard from other people, he didn't really up. He, he didn't really deliver to expectations. So I think having Vettel in that car, he could have been in a shout of winning that championship in two thousand eight, just two years prior to when he did it actually for the first time with Red Bull. But like I said, looking back in hindsight, you know. It was a it was a good move that he didn't go to McLaren because in two thousand in two thousand nine McLaren's car weren't that good. Then for the next couple of years it was uh, one minute they would be they would have a really good car and then the next minute they would, they would have a really bad car, and it was just very inconsistent. And would have would have, would have Vettel won a championship in the McLaren? No, absolutely not. He was correct to stay with Red Bull. He obviously he believed in the project when he signed in two thousand and nine. And look at where he well where he was at the time a four time world champion totally dominated the sport, moved to Ferrari. However, things didn't really materialise and he, didn't, he hasn't won any championships with Ferrari, which is very, very unfortunate. But yeah, how how cool would it have been to have seen these two drivers in the same team? It would have been big, big news at the time to see these two drivers in the same team. And I think it's something that a lot of people still want to happen to today. And I can't really see it happening at all. I just can't see him being alongside Lewis Hamilton at, at all. I can't can't see Vettel going to Mercedes and I can't see Lewis Hamilton leaving Mercedes. So yeah, maybe we'll never we'll never be able to see it. And unfortunately, we'll never be able to see those two having a title fight unless Aston Martin do have an, a very good car if Vettel goes to there. But we'll have to wait and see for that. So yeah, how cool would it have been to see those two uh, at McLaren back in 2008? Let me know in the comment section below. So next up, 2009 World Champion Jensen Button has said that Daniel Ricciardo's move to McLaren is make or break for his career. 
Now, Daniel Ricciardo uh, announced at the start of the year that he was going to be leaving Renault and jumping ship to McLaren, replacing Carlos Sainz, who is going to Ferrari, who is replacing Sebastian Vettel. I'm pretty sure you're all aware of this transfer merry-go-round right now. Now, Daniel Ricciardo left Red Bull in 2018 after he, he could see that the team was formulating around Verstappen and kind of leaving Ricciardo out in the dark. So he kind of did a very surprising move to Renault for 2019, it hasn't really worked in after a year and he's already going to be leaving the Endstone based team and moving over to Woken. Now, Jensen Button has said that this is a very good move for Daniel Ricciardo because he believes that he can still win a world championship, but he needs to be at a team that can deliver him a championship winning car at least, or you know, at least race winning car for that matter. Now, of course, we all know that Renault aren't in no position to be able to produce Daniel Ricciardo a race winning car. However, McLaren potentially could be because next season they're switching to Mercedes power for 2021 and that's very exciting that's got a lot of people excited as well and especially former McLaren driver Jensen Button he's saying that this move you know for McLaren to go to Mercedes it's right for Daniel Ricciardo he needs to go somewhere that is on the rise as well as what he is he said that he said that he's very young and he can still you know still win a world championship now we know Daniel Ricciardo is a very quick driver we've seen that at Red Bull you know he was almost beaten for Statman to one extent you know he had a very good start to 2018 and then I think since Baku, when they both collided, it all kind of went sour from there. And that's pretty much when Ricardo said, I'm going to be leaving the team and going off to Renault. Now, yes, I think going to, for Dan Ricardo going to McLaren, it is a bit of a, it is, I would, I would agree with Jensen, it is make or break. Now, do I honestly believe that McLaren and Dan Ricardo can become world champions? Probably not. But do I believe that Ricardo can win in the McLaren? Absolutely. I think having that right formula with the Mercedes engines coming in, I can't say winning in 2021, but 2022 is certainly a good shout. A restart in the regulations. McLaren are a team that do need to get back to the front of the grid, as well as some other teams for that matter. Going to Mercedes Power, it's certainly the, it certainly is the right engine to have. The best engine by far, the more consistent, the faster engine. It's going to give them a couple of you know a, a few a few extra horsepower in the back of that motor, but you know, McLaren do need to produce the right car. And McLaren are quite known for having a good chassis, but recently they just haven't had the engine to go with it. And having Ricardo, it's certainly an upgrade in what they've had in recent in recent years. And I'm excited to see what Ricardo can produce in the McLaren alongside Lando Norris. That's going to be a very good partnership for 2021. And as a McLaren fan, I'm looking forward to seeing Ricardo in that orange. Hopefully it's going to be an orange McLaren. But I mean, looking back in hindsight, I think I'm always looking back in hindsight. I think you should have went to McLaren for 2019 he admitted that he had talks with the team but he admitted that you know McLaren weren't in any position to be competitive in the midfield and Renault were because if you look at Renault's record they had a very good 2018 I think they finished fourth in the standings and McLaren end of the season uh the ninth slowest team on the grid just faster just faster than the Williams so you could you could you could look at that and go yeah all right in hindsight it was good for Ricardo to go to Renault at the time but then Renault had a bad season and McLaren had a good season and it seems like Renault that have made progress this season. They do look a bit quicker, but so have McLaren. McLaren have made that a little bit of progress. I mean, the car's not really that good, chassis problems and stuff, but Renault do have the similar kind of problem. So, you know, McLaren do need to sort that out. And I'm very, very, I'm looking forward to seeing Dan Ricciardo in that McLaren. I think he will push that team and we might see a little bit of glimpses as to what he can be as a pure driver, because he is a great driver. Is he World Championship material driver? I would say he can, give him the right car. I believe he could do that. You know, he did very well at Red Bull, but it didn't really happen towards the end of the season because, you know, he was leaving and stuff. But no, I think he's a great driver. Give him the right car. He could happily do it, no problem at all. So yeah, what do you think about this? Do you think it is make or break for Daniel Ricciardo? Do you believe he can win a World Championship at all? Or even in the McLaren? Do you think he can win races with McLaren? Or do you think this move is completely useless? He should have stayed at Renault or he should be going to somewhere else for that matter. Let me know in the comment section below. Well, Helmer Marko's been in the news this week, but for all the right reasons. Normally, Helmer Marko's in the media for saying some sort of false accusations or saying some sort of silly statement, but I would say this one is a very nice one. Now, he revealed that Nico Hultenberg has approached Red Bull about potentially being in one of his seats for 2021. Now, Nico Hultenberg was uh, the hero of the moment back at the British Grand Prix when Risk Point announced that Sergio Perez had contracted COVID-19 just prior to that, that race that weekend. On the Thursday, they gave Nick Hultenberg the call. He flew over, landed at Silverstone, got a uh, seat fit in. He got his uh, uniform. He was on the simulator for a bit. Got, went to the track the very next day, only after having, what, two, three hours sleep? Got another, uh, uh, got another test, went in the car for FP1, and here he is. He's back. 
Oh, Nico Hultenberg is back, and it certainly brought a lot of joy back to the F1 community. A lot of people that we follow on, on YouTube and stuff, they were very happy to see Nico Hultenberg back in Formula 1. But now there's been that rumour mill circulating again about Hultenberg potentially coming back to Formula 1 next year. One of those teams that he's linked with was Alfa Romeo, the other one being Haas as well. Those two teams that realistically could have a seat available for the German. I would say Huttenberg's not quite finished with Formula 1 just yet. There is still that, that kind of ability within him and maybe that, you know, that fire and desire to come back and maybe be competitive. But, you know, I would say Huttenberg, he really wants to be at the front of the grid. And Red Bull do offer that opportunity for him. And like I said, Huttenberg had approached Red Bull and making himself available. And Helmut Marko really praised uh, Huttenberg as to how quickly he adapted back into Formula 1 after such short notice. You know, just how, how as if he, he'd never been away, he felt quite at home. And it was on the pace as well. He did beat Lance Stroll in some sessions, unfortunately he didn't beat him in the race. But that's not the point. But if you are a Huttenberg fan and you're thinking that, oh, hang on a minute, is he going to be able to get the seat? Well, Helmut Marko has said that that's not going to guarantee that he's going to get that seat next season because there are a few people that have also impressed Helmut and he also said that well if every driver that impressed me was going to get that seat I would have 10 cars or I would need 10 cars within the, within the team so yeah that kind of played on the chances I would love to see Huttenberg in a Red Bull I would say if they were to get rid of Alexander Albon either during the season or next season you're going to need a, a very well established experienced driver alongside Max Verstappen rather than promoting one of the young drivers because let's face it, it's not really working, is it? They need someone outside the academy, someone who has got speed and experience. Sergio Perez is one of those drivers linked with that move and as well as Nico Hultenberg. I would like to say it happen. Do I think it will happen? No, I really don't think. I think this, this could just be media hype and talk, if, if I'm being totally honest. Maybe just to kind of get the word out there for Red Bull or just to get the name in the media spotlight. I can't see Huttenberg back in the sport next season. Maybe at Alfa Romeo or, or even Haas or even somewhere else if he wants to, if he wants to surprise us. But I can't say him, I really can't say him at Red Bull for 2021, unfortunately. So, yeah, I'm sorry to dampen your hopes on that one, guys, because I know a lot of you guys would have been really hoping for uh, Red Bull to announce that uh, Nick Huttenberg could be going to that said team. But hey, it could still happen. Red Bull are very unpredictable. They could do that. I I'll be very surprised if they do. But also, I wouldn't be disappointed as well. And finally, some good news. And some kind of sad news to finish off with. Now, I'm pretty sure you've all heard this week that Williams have officially been sold. And that means that Frank Williams' 43-year ownership of the team has come to an end. Uh, Derilton Capital have purchased the team and have took full control of the team after the Spanish Grand Prix. Now, this is very positive to hear in terms of like the positive aspects of things Claire Williams revealed that they were looking at investors that the work that you know that they were struggling financially which was no stranger to us we already knew this but you know going through the world pandemic hasn't really helped that team and obviously them smaller teams as well and a lot of us fans were quite fearing for the life of Williams we didn't want to see a team like that go from the grid they're a classic Formula One team they've been here since 1977 so we certainly don't want to see them disappear you know they're one of the last family owned teams but the, in a way that they are disappearing in the sense that Frank Williams will not be owner of the team anymore, at least they will still be on the grid. The new owners at Geraldton did say that they were going to be sticking with the name Williams, that they weren't going to be moving from their factory in Grove. Um, and basically, the Geraldton Capital, they're just going to be working alongside Williams for now, trying to understand the company, understand the business, what, what the plan is going forward which is very positive to hear that they, they do work with other kind of medium-sized companies and kind of help them, you know, push them in the right direction going forward. And Williams kind of fits that bracket for them. I think they purchased the team for about $152 million, I think it might have been, um, which is, you know, pretty decent amount. So I would say this is very positive that we are going to see Williams still on the grid or at least a Formula 1 team on the grid if they do want to change the name in the future. But it's also sad that Frank Williams will not be owner of the team, ending the kind of the last, ending, ending an era of Formula One, which a lot of people were saying this week. And yeah, it, it is sad. But is this going to be the move that pushes Williams up the grid? I would certainly like to think so. I mean, we don't know what's actually going to be happening in the future. I don't want to sit here and go, oh yeah, this is Williams is going to be the next Mercedes. They're going to dominate the sport. Or oh, this could be an absolutely crisis thing, and they could just run the team into the ground and. You know, it could be the worst thing to ever to happen to the team. So I don't want to. I don't want to think like that. But you've got to take that in the mind. I like, don't get all the hype just yet, and we we aren't going to see a change within like the performance of Williams overnight. We won't see it this season. I don't think we'll see it next season. 
Will we see it in 2022? It just depends what kind of plans they've got going forward and how much uh, Doralton want to invest in the team or you know invest in, in facilities. I think they will have to upgrade some facilities. Change the factories, they've said no, but they might need to. I'm not too sure on that one. But if they don't, uh, they need to improve the factory, invest in aer aerodynamics and, and, and hopefully have a really good car for the future. I think another thing that got Doralton hooked was because of the, the brand new rules that are coming into play with this new Concord Agreement kind of increasing the funds to give to the smaller teams in terms of prize money because there's a big divide between how much the top the winners get and how much the team that finishes bottom or even close to the bottom get it's a big gap and formula one is a is a money oriented sport and if you don't have much money in formula one you're never going to succeed so they they do need to split that kind of prize money to give some more money to the smaller teams who aren't really in a financial aren't really in the green let's say the more in the black or even in the red uh, you know teams like Mercedes and Ferrari they kind of got all the money in the bank but Williams they're struggling financially and especially after the COVID-19 situation so I think this has certainly encouraged them and went okay I like this deal let's sign this contract and let's finish off the deal to buy the team and move them forward it's very exciting times for for Williams as well so I'm very happy that they have been able to purchase the team and um, I think Claire Williams is going to be staying on we'll have to wait and see on that there's been a few again a few argy bargy things about that saying oh, is Claire Williams the right person for the job to take the team forward but hey we'll have to wait and see on that one whether Geraldton want to have her in or not but I'm over the moon with this news but guys thank you so much for watching as always this is where I'm going to wrap up F1 24 7 for this week uh, news articles to all the uh, news I was talking about in today's, in today's episode will be in the description below so go and give them a big read and obviously give uh, credit to the publicators who did publish these articles if you're new around it then please drop us a like and subscribe as always and like I said comment below about anything that I've said in today's F1 24 7 news we've got the Belgian Grand Prix coming up this week tomorrow we've got the uh, Belgian Grand Prix preview we've got a top 10 video coming from Lyle got the F1 debate on the Saturday and then we've got the Belgian Grand Prix review live stream again with Lyle straight after the Grand Prix to go so I do hope that you don't miss that one. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Watch what you're doing. Stay safe as always. And until next time, I'll see you later.